What is up, guys? I'm DDK. Welcome to this week's episode of Get Good. Today, we'll be talking about applied mouse control. So we already know what mouse control is. It's flicking and tracking. Um, but when we go into our game of choice, a game that you guys care the most about, where we really want to get uh, the best performances possible, each game is going to be different in terms of which skill sets it's going to emphasize in terms of mouse control. For example, a battle royale game like Fortnite is going to have loads of verticality, much like a Quake game will, you know, an arcade FPS, very dynamic aiming arenas, essentially. But if you look at CS or Valorant or other tactical FPS games, you've got way less verticality and you have way less dynamic situations. You don't often have to flick right behind you and flick right back and maybe flicking all over the place. You know, that's the, that's mostly going to be about arena FPSs and, and battle royale games. So understanding this is going to bring us to our next step. And that is just looking at tactical FPS games and arena FPS games and battle royales and just really looking and trying to distill what are the skill sets we're actually using? What are some good practices here? And so I think the first place to start is with the tactical FPS games because I think there's something really beautiful about watching great crosshair placement. Great crosshair placement comes down to a few different skills all working together. Pre-aiming, visualization, and tracking. Angle snapping. And altogether, it can look something like this here from Deco. This is a great clutch from him, the pre-aim there to make sure his crosshair is in the right place to make sure there's minimal adjustment required once he finally peaks. And you can see the angle snapping as he changes his point of focus. And then as he maintains the point of focus but has to move, the tracking is occurring. And then we get more angle snapping. And if he's correct, Pop doesn't even have to move at all. And once again, it's rinse and repeat. Anticipation leads him to understand which point to focus and visualize upon. He snaps to that angle, snaps to the next angle. Then it's about tracking and reacting, making sure that his technique work for the recoil control is on point. And that is how this all comes together here for Deco in this situation that requires an immense amount of game sense. But obviously the skill is there with his excellent mechanics and cross up placement. Mayun is up next, showing us how important it is to have very good flicks for your angle snapping in your crosshair placement. The angle snap is you quickly flicking to the next point of focus where you expect the next engagement to be. And even though he's moving his mouse around a lot, he's often correct and needs minimal adjustment, which really is the key, minimal adjustment. So there is a clear relationship between the mouse control and the game knowledge components. The game knowledge tells you what angles you need to focus on and the mouse control is really about you know, most effectively being able to execute in the aiming component. Now, you don't have to have the best game knowledge in the world to have great mouse control and to have great crosshair placement. But when you do have great game knowledge, it's pretty damn useful to have that good mouse control and crosshair placement ready to go so that you can perform really well. So make sure that you're diligent in your practices here, understanding that you should be you know, operating under the principle of minimal wasted mouse movements so you are efficient, making sure that you're pre-aiming, that you're doing the angle snapping between different points of focus, that you have great tracking and understanding of how the crosshair should be placed on different angles. If you're doing all of these things, you'll be well on your way to success as your game knowledge grows over time. And again, be diligent and make sure that every single time you jump in the server, you're doing your crosshair placement. Now, similarly here in an arena FPS game such as Diabotical, you also want to have good crosshair placement. Now, it's something though that can't be as guaranteed as attack FPS because the environment's very dynamic and the opponents are very fast moving, but it's generally still a benefit to make sure that you have a minimal adjustment once your opponent is on screen. That is always gonna be the path to consistency. Instead, the decision in terms of how you use your mouse in a game like this comes down to adjusting for your movement and also deciding how to adjust for your opponent's dodging habits and tendencies. That is why micro flicks and medium flicks can be very, very important to be on top of and to have very firmly embedded into your mechanical tool belt, as it were. And there's lots of tools on AimLab, for example, to help you with those micro and medium flicks. Because as we saw in that situation where I jumped across and landed that rail, I understood that my opponent might suddenly change direction. So if I'm flicking, my flick is almost instant. So he gets minimal chance to you know, dodge that. Once I flicked, if I'm gonna be able to hit where my cross is supposed to land, I'm gonna hit my target. So I really take his dodging out of the equation. So that skill is very important in games like this. 
as is you know tracking in all sorts of different directions which is something that you don't have in tactical fps as well because the time to kill is low in attack fps but in these games the time to kill can be quite high so with the lightning gun or you know, these kinds of continual stream weapons you will be required to consistently speed match and track your opponents who are moving diagonally with lots of verticality at times maybe it's just horizontal at other times and maybe you have to quickly adjust afterwards to a flicking movement or maybe you just need to get somewhere else very quickly so there's lots more mouse movement that's required generally in these games which tends to mean that we have an average centimeters for 360 in terms of sensitivities for mice of between 20 to 30 centimeters is the average for games like this and when we're talking about games like tactical FPSs like CS and Valorant, we're looking at much higher uh, sensitivities or much slower, I should say, which is 30, between 30 and 60 centimeters is usually where most players find themselves. But 30 centimeters is very, very fast for a tactical FPS player, <laughs> whereas it's very slow for an arena FPS player. And this final clip is with Asu in Apex Legends, which just shows that this game's battle royale is very similar to arcade FPS in that it's very demanding on your mouse control. Lots of verticality, lots of big positional flicks, lots of tracking that's precise and slow as well as quick. It's just a very dynamic and fast paced environment that's very crazy. Now, one guideline you can always use if you aren't able to really feel like you understand what the game is telling you that you need to do in terms of mouse control, you can look at players like Asu and other great professionals who have good mouse mechanics and see, you know, how does it look like when they're playing the game? Where are the emphasis on the various skills of mouse control and flicking and tracking? And where are my weaknesses? How do I bridge the gap between what they're doing and what I am doing? And you can use tools such as AimLab to really help you to isolate certain things if you decide that there are certain areas that really need improvement, such as, you know, micro flicks, or maybe it's going to be vertical tracking. Whatever it is, there are tools there to help you. And so there you have it. We took the ideas of mouse control and we looked at them and we said, okay, how does that relate to what we're doing in the game? We packaged it up. We've got crosshair placement in tactical FPS games. It's the idea of having the minimal wasted mouse movement, super efficient mouse movement, and making sure that all the tracking and flicking skills you know, come together in that execution of those mechanics. We can look at the arcade FPS games as well. Much quicker mouse movements, generally speaking, much more dynamic environments, much more verticality, and it, in just being able to name these things, it allows us to then think if we're, if we're struggling with them, we can recognize what we're struggling with, and then we can go and isolate those things if we need to. If we really need to isolate those things because we're lagging behind on our vertical tracking, for example, or the positional flicks, we can go into AimLab and we can go and practice these things in isolation. And that's really what that tool is there to do for you. And well, that's everything I have on Applied Mouse Control for now. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and to follow our socials so anytime there's new content, you don't miss out. See you next time.